Amy Tipler. So appreciate your help. Um, and uh, welcome everyone. So glad you all are here today uh, for the division update. I will tell you, um, so a, a second ago, and I'm sort of just kind of getting um, uh, back to, in my head into things. Uh, I, I'm listening to Amy Tipler do the housekeeping and it flashed across my screen that um, I had left. Uh, and so I was panicked there for just a moment. Um, and clearly I didn't really leave uh, virtually or physically, so everything's fine, but I, it, it's gonna, uh, anyway, I'm getting my head back. <laughs> it just was a little bit of a like, wait a minute, uh, I'm not sure what's going on. Everything's fine. Happy Tuesday to you. Hopefully you're not confused by technology as I am. Um, but anyway, we're, with Amy Tipler's wonderful help and, and other folks, uh, the, the division update will go swimmingly. Uh, so uh, anyway, welcome so much. Thank you so much for being here. Um, Amy Tipler is going to be driving the slides for me again, which I greatly appreciate. So I will be talking her through that. Um, and so Amy, if you would go ahead and advance to the next slide, uh, just again saying welcome to everyone since we don't um, have cameras on uh, during the division an update just I'm uh, gonna flash up there just for a second um, uh, my photograph uh, there I do welcome you um, and I am pleased and honored to be the director of the Division of Library and Information Services um, also uh, known as Florida State Librarian which is a title I, I uh, uh, wear, have great pride in, in having so if we'll go ahead and get uh, good get going here if we'll advance to the next slide please this is the uh, division update for the division of library and information services i do hope that you will um uh, drop any questions that you have into chat, as Amy Tipler was saying during our housekeeping time, or um, we certainly can um, uh, have an opportunity to um, unmute uh, microphones and have you ask questions. Uh, but I will be watching the chat. Other people are watching the chat as well. So if you have questions, I definitely want to get those um, answered for you. So we'll go ahead and move to the next uh, screen, please. Uh, we always like to start at the top of this quarterly update and thinking about legislative sessions. And um, while we did just finish um, a legislative session, my heavens, it feels like like uh, not that long ago, um, they did adjourn Sunny Die on March 14th uh, with our standard legislative session. Uh, but we already know um, at this point of one special session that will be held next week. Certainly, I'm sure you're probably hearing in the news as I am that there are other topics that may need to be addressed. And so there may be either other special sessions or um, there may be other content, I suppose, added to the special session that has been announced for next week, April 19th through 22nd. Uh, the, the special session next week is um, at this point, as far as I am aware, dedicated to the redistricting maps and, and that work that must be done getting ready for uh, the elections that we have coming up a little later this year. So also thinking ahead to um, the next couple of years, uh, the time frame there um, on your screen, um, since we now have a, uh, a a, a pattern that allows in um, odd numbered years, uh, March through May, uh, mid-March through mid-May um, timeframe for legislative session, and in even years that January through March timeframe for legislative sessions. So always wanting to sort of keep that on our radar. Um, and especially as we move into looking at the next slide, uh, those legislative sessions timings absolutely have a bearing on our yearly budget cycle. Um, so my screen is uh, for the next slide, please. There we go. Thank you. And it may be a little slow um, on my internet connection, but the, obviously the legislative session does affect our yearly budget cycle. For this particular year, we really are right there, you know, sort of as the clock is moving, if you will, from, you know, 11 p.m. to, to midnight there at the, at the top. We are right at the end of this 
if you will, cycle where the, the General Appropriations Act has been passed by the legislature. That was their last act that they did before they left town on March the 14th. And we are waiting um, in that very you know, top part of the top left part of the, the circle there for the governor to sign the budget, uh, which we need in place prior to July 1st, since that's the start of our uh, fiscal year. So we're going to talk about some more uh, related to that, but this particular budget cycle is always going to be um, flexing a little bit in time based on when legislative sessions um, are happening. So that's just a quick look at where we are right now in our budget cycle. If we go on to the next slide, we're going to see, um, thank you, Amy T. Um, we're going to see some budget items that are, I know, of interest uh, to all of us. Um, there on the screen, sort of looking at three years worth of information. As I said, the 22-23 proposed budget is indeed just that, proposed, in that it has been passed by the House and Senate. It has not yet been signed by the governor. And at this point, um, I don't anticipate that the governor will sign the budget until much deeper in April. Um, uh, based on the special session that, that's getting ready to happen. But we'll see uh, the, uh, when the, the budget gets signed. But what, what we do have is um, great news in that there is um, the um, additional $2 million in the state aid to libraries, which um, was proposed right at the very end of the last legislative session. Um, and so that's wonderful, bringing that to $19.3 million. You do see that uh, that final column to the right, the 22-23 proposed budget um, is in italics because it is not yet signed. So it is still um, waiting for signature and authorization. All right, so, and again, if, in, if you have any questions, please feel free to put them in chat at any point. I am um, watching the chat, so happy to answer questions as we go. Um, but we'll move on to the next slide and look at um, a budget comparison by category. There are three different funds that uh, come together to make the entirety of the DLIS budget. Again, that 22, 23 year um, in italics because we're waiting on that approval, just the proposed budget um, amounts there that you see. Um, uh, and you'll you'll notice, obviously, there are some differences in uh, over the years. The, the biggest difference that I'll point out, and we have several, a couple of other slides that will also uh, point this out, is that the Federal Grants Trust Fund, those are our Library Services and Technology Act grant funds, um, in the 22-23 year, we do not anticipate any additional federal funding. In 21-22, we had $6.7 million in ARPA. In 2020-2021, we had $1.6 million in CARES Act funding. So what you see is that uh, the similar to the 2019-2020 level, back in the 2022-2023 column of that roughly $9 million that we're receiving uh, from uh, from the Institute of Museum and Library Services. So again, just an overview looking at uh, the budget categories as a whole. And again, that far right column still being a proposed budget amount, um, and so uh, represented here in italics. By the time we meet again at the next division update, um, which is, this is, I guess, a little spoiler alert, it'll be uh, early July, and those numbers, of course, will be finalized with the governor's signature, because we'll be, at that point, we will have, uh, by the time we're next together for a division update, we will um, be inside the new fiscal year. So moving ahead to our next slide, um, just a different way to look at um, uh, at funding, because uh, I always think that these are sort of interesting ways to look at in comparison. Um, the current year, our current year, 2021-2022, highlighted in bold there towards the bottom, and then the italics amount at the uh, at the very bottom, the proposed budget. So again, overall budget uh, of the uh, of the division. Um, and, if, and represented as a five-year funding history. If we move on, and I'm keeping an eye on the chat, if we move on to the state aid to libraries um, slide, thank you so much, Amy T. See a five-year funding history here of um, state aid to libraries. 
Um, we talked about that additional $2 million um, uh, coming into state aid right at the end of legislative session. So it took us from the $17.3 million in recurring funding to $19.3 million as proposed in the 2022-2023 year. So moving um, ahead to the next slide, our library cooperative grant funding. Um, there, perfect, thank you. Um, the $2 million is the recurring amount that is um, available in this program. And so that is indeed included in the budget uh, for next state fiscal year, as you'll see represented here on the slide. Always great news. Moving forward, public forward sorry, um, on the uh, slides, the public library construction grants, um, we do not receive any general revenue um, appropriation or proposed budget uh, for 2022-2023. I do know that prior to this, um, to the webinar, I did have a question related to, is there any other construction funding? Um, and at this point, there is no news on any other construct construction funding available. Uh, this that we're looking at, the chart specifically represents uh, funds in the state budget. Um, there uh, is a potential opportunity uh, related to federal funding, and I won't know more about that until uh, deeper in the summer um, and uh, related to whether uh, library projects would be included in that. So stay tuned with me on that. Uh, no new news uh, uh, at this point related to federal potential, the potential for federal construction funding. So if we move forward to my last um, uh, slide here related to funding, um, just looking at uh, the five-year funding history for our federal funds. Um, and you can see there very clearly the uh, CARES Act funding and the ARPA funds um, and how those did um, help to impact the, um, the uh, overall federal allotment we, that we got and of course uh, then did uh, bolster uh, strongly the external uh, federal awards that the that the division was able to, to make. So we're back to our traditional $2.15 million that will be awarded in federal grants for the applications that were that just uh, were received. So uh, again, waiting on the governor just to sign the budget for that, but um, the, that's uh, what the picture is looking like uh, for, for the current year for um, federal external uh, funding. All right, so any questions? I don't, I'm looking at the chat. I don't see any questions in chat um, at this point about anything related to the budget. I am gonna transition to a couple of other topics. So just I'm gonna uh, take a sip of water and see if any questions come in related to anything on the budget. Not seeing any, this is Amy Johnson, not seeing anything come through in chat um, and not uh, being uh, prompted by um, Amy T about any questions that she happens to say. Oh, I do. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh -huh. So Cheryl, do you have a question? Can you unmute yourself? Hi, sorry. Um, I had, um, um, we're having some building problems and I had to join late. Um, so I missed the um, state aid slide. Okay, sure. Thank you, Cheryl. Well, what we're going to do is go ahead and um, remute everybody. And then. Uh, Perfect, thank you. So um, thank you, Cheryl, for that question. Amy T, if you would help me out, can you go back to slide nine so that we can um, look at uh, and answer Cheryl's question? Thank you, perfect, back to state aid. 
I probably can't count. I probably am looking at the wrong thing. There you go. Perfect. Thank you, Amy T. You're fabulous. So Cheryl, I believe this answers your question. So what we're looking at for 2022-2023 um, is an additional $2 million. So the $17,304,072 is the recurring base budget for state aid. And at the very last moments of um, the budget process, there was an additional $2 million that was added to the state aid to libraries uh, proposed funding request, which brings the, the current, the, sorry, excuse me, the next year state budget uh, proposed uh, state aid to libraries funding to $19,304,072. Um, and so that is in italics because that is, we're waiting on the, the governor's uh, signature on the proposed budget, but um, that, I, yeah, perfect, great, thanks, Cheryl. Um, I'm glad that that, uh, that answers your question. So we're looking at uh, 19.3. So basically, um, sort of statistically, almost the same amount that we've had uh, for in the current state fiscal year for 2021, 2022, slightly less, but um, basically the same amount. So wonderful, I'm glad that we can answer that question. All right, and what we'll do is, again, I'm happy to answer any budget questions. We're gonna go ahead and move forward with content. Um, so Amy T, if we can, whatever's best for you, perfect there, perfect, thank you so much. Amy T works magic, all I gotta do is talk. So thank you, Amy T, for, for being uh, on the magic brigade today. Um, so just wanted to talk for a moment about the DLIS councils and boards. Um, we do have two um, uh, councils and boards that I want to talk about uh, today. Um, our division's uh, citizen support organization, or the Friends of the State Library and Archives of Florida, Inc., provides support for division activities and facilitates awareness of the division. The next meetings of our CSO board are on May 18th. That's a virtual meeting on May 18th. Um, for a couple of hours in the afternoon. And then we'll have the next full board meeting, June 27th and 28th. Um, and that will again be a virtual meeting. So there's more information that you can find on our webpage if you would like to join um, in and, um, and listen to some of the meetings, you certainly can do that. Um, in addition, we have um, our State Library Council, and our State Library Council is um, provides advice and assistance related to federal funding for projects. They next meet on June 8th and 9th, and they will be at that meeting in a grant review panel meeting, and they will be reviewing the Library Services and Technology Act grant applications, which were just submitted and making recommendations to the Secretary of State for funding. So that's on June 8th and 9th. Uh, that is is an in-person meeting here in Tallahassee at the RA Gray Building, or you can join um, via webinar. So it, it, there are two different ways to, uh, to, to uh, listen in on the State Library Council meeting June 8th and 9th. Again, more information up on our webpage. And it, as with anything we talk about today, you can always send me an email We'll get to my email address a little later in the presentation, so you can always reach out and, and get information um, from me related to that. But we're going to move on to the next slide. Um, it has to, still has to do with our, um, with to some degree, with our State Library Council, definitely has to do with our federal funding. I did want to make sure that everybody was um, aware, because we're, we're really thrilled that um, we have, we're in the process right now per the Institute of Museum and Library Services, which is our federal, uh, uh, provides some federal funding for us, uh, that roughly $9 million, that we um, are required by the Institute of Museum and Library Services to uh, uh, complete a five-year evaluation. And we have just um, at the end of March, so not too long ago, um, completed our evaluation and submitted it to IMLS. And you can read the evaluation. And thank you, Amy T, for dropping that link into the chat so that folks can uh, get to that evaluation and see um, what our external evaluator um, 
uh, said related to our federal grant program. The, the next piece that we have to do in order to stay in compliance with the feds um, and continue to receive the federal funding is to finish um, up uh, developing our five-year plan. That is due um, to IMLS or the Institute of Museum and Library Services by the end of June. Um, thank you to all of you for participating in focus groups and the survey. You provided incredible feedback to us. All of that information is now being put together um, into uh, the five-year plan, which will guide how uh, we move forward with our federal funding uh, in, uh, uh, in over the next the, the next five years um, after it's approved from IMLS, the new plan will not take effect for us uh, until July 1, 2023. Um, which for on a local level would be October 1, 2023. So we will submit it in June and then there are several months to get it approved. Um, but in the interim, it will be available on our webpage so that um, you're well aware of, of, of how we're moving forward um, into the future with our federal funds. So all good stuff um, happening here related to our federal funding and, and staying in compliance with requirements um, from the federal government. So now I want to move to some of our partnerships that we're working on. So the next slide, please. Perfect. Thank you, Amy T. Um, I got several slides related to partnerships. The first one that I'm, I'm highlighting today, um, public libraries. Um, I know I've sent out an email very recently. Um, please let me know if you did not receive it. Public libraries in the state of Florida are voter registration agencies, and as such, uh, there is a quarterly reporting requirement, and that report happens to be due this week, uh, the end of the week. You can see there on your screen, you uh, need to send an email to the email address at the bottom of the screen there um, and, and let uh, the, our, our friends and colleagues here in the Division of Elections know how many um, uh, voter uh, registration forms that you um, have delivered to the supervisor of elections office. So uh, just a general reminder that that uh, reporting period um, has ended on March 31st. And so the due date for the your email uh, to the Division of Elections is due by Friday. So again, if you have any questions about this, um, please uh, feel free to reach out to me. Um, uh, after this particular uh, webinar is over, or you can certainly ask questions in the chat. Um, I'm still in the process of contacting libraries and um, sort of making sure that we've got correct contact information related to this reporting requirement. So uh, a great DLIS partnership and a great way that libraries, um, number one, are, uh, are, are participating and helping communities and also uh, fulfilling uh, their role as outlined in state law. Um, on to another partnership, which is a new partnership. Um, next slide, please. We are thrilled to be working with um, the Division of Historical Resources um, in helping to get out information into the state of Florida on the Florida Historic Cemetery Inventory. Um, so uh, there are a couple of different uh, pieces here, which with more information to come in our newsletters, um, is there we need help. The, the state of Florida needs help um, finding uh, historic cemeteries. It's estimated that three quarters of the historic cemeteries in Florida have not been recorded. Um, and so we need to get the word out across the state of Florida and we know libraries are a great way to do that. And um, so what I've got on the slide here is a, a web address so that you can learn more. Um, there's also the ability for, um, for libraries and we're thinking in terms of public libraries, but there could be other kinds of libraries that would like to do this as well to request postcards and there are actual physical postcards that you could put out on your desk or you know perhaps um, you know pass along to a historical society meeting or a genealogical society meeting that might um, happen uh, on site with you there um, to help get the information uh, 
that would be needed in order to record these historic cemeteries and uh, that were that this is to complete an inventory of local community church or family cemetery so we're really looking forward to um, through using uh, libraries and your contacts in the community to be able to help uh, bolster and record these uh, historic cemeteries for us in the state of Florida. So uh, again, happy to pass along more information. We will be sending out information in our newsletters um, and providing other information. This is sort of the first time that we're having an opportunity to talk about this um, incredible work that we can help do and you all can help do across the state of Florida with our um, historic cemetery inventory. So thank you for your help on that. And moving forward to another partnership, um, and this one is so exciting. Um, this We have um, a, a new project uh, called the Real Florida Reader. And I guess let me, before I get started telling you about this partnership, what this particular partnership is, will do is to leverage the local partnerships that you all and public libraries and across the state and libraries have had for many, many years. Um, and, and this is the, so let me tell you about the, the partnership that is coming soon. The Real Florida Reader is a statewide project between the Division of Library Information Services with us and the Florida State Parks. We want to encourage visitation to libraries and parks this summer. Uh, public libraries will have the opportunity to build programming around this unique project. The project will launch um, in late May 2022. So stay tuned, folks, for more information coming out about the Real Florida Reader. Again, looking to leverage the, um, the partnerships that you all have, have established over time um, in your localities with those state parks. So more information coming soon on the Real Florida Reader. So I am watching the, the chat as we're going here, um, if, you, if anybody has any questions, but we'll keep on moving through content. Um, the next slide has to do with Career Online High School. So we have 41 participating public libraries. Uh, this particular program allows uh, residents to receive their uh, a private high school diploma through their public library. Again, 41 participating libraries. The great news that, um, that we um, know about Career Online High School is that in the proposed budget, there are um, $2 million for uh, FY22-23, so uh, $2 million, as well as the ability to roll over the current unused uh, scholarships. So lots of great news about Career Online High School. If you're not, currently participating and your public library would be interested in learning more and participating um, in this program, please reach out to me. Be more than happy to talk to you and connect you with other folks um, who, who can provide information about that. So happy to do that. Great. Oh, thank you. And, and uh, thank you, Dolly, for putting things in the chat for those who are, I hope you're watching the chat like I am. Um, so back to the Real Florida Reader, we'll be having a couple of town halls a little later this month, and also the DLIS discussion um, will highlight that new partnership. So great, thank you, Dolly, for helping me with the um, uh, remind folks of all the incredible opportunities coming up. So great, thank you, thank you. So if we go on to the next slide, we'll be um, got a couple of upcoming grant deadlines. Um, the library cooperative uh, grant applications are due on May 3rd and public library construction applications are due on May 20th. Those are our upcoming grant deadlines. Um, and then we won't have another grant deadline until October 1st, which I know will be here before we know it, but um, still seems like a little bit of a ways off uh, from now. So those are our upcoming grant deadlines. My next slide is about statewide resource sharing. 
Um, and so just making sure to remind everybody, if you're interested in becoming a Flynn Share It library, please be sure to let us know. That is the state's res uh, a statewide resource sharing platform. We offer that to all of Florida's academic, public, and special libraries. We'd be more than happy to, to talk to you about that. As a matter of fact, I know that there is a panel discussion about Flynn Share It that will be held at the FLA um, conference that's coming up at the end of May. So you could learn more by attending that virtual session, at, at, of course, attending the Florida Library Association conference and also um, at, at, uh, uh, attending that virtual session during that, uh, during that conference. Um, we have just recently uh, moved our career service to FedEx Ground. I'm sure that all of you all on the call are aware of that, um, that with the change of that vendor. Um, I know that we've been having town hall meetings related to uh, that particular cur courier change or that vendor change uh, this week. So let's see if you have questions, um, we could talk about them now or we can um, get you in touch with uh, uh, TBLC delivery and other folks who can answer any specific questions. But um, the, the, the division is proud to have supported resource sharing for over 50 years. And these are just two of the current ways that we're continuing to support resource sharing. Now I'm going to keep on moving forward with our with content um, whenever we're together. So the next slide, perfect. Thank you. Uh, as a statewide digital platform, um, we are working to finalize our contract with our vendor, um, at Discovery Garden, and we will be able to announce additional information. Um, as quickly as possible. Uh, th this is continuing to move forward, which is wonderful. Um, we are in the contracting phase at this point, which is obviously a very important phase um, as we're as we're looking to bring this particular statewide digital platform um, and make it available to uh, LAMs, libraries, archives, and museums um, that would like to participate and like to um, to learn more. So stay tuned about the statewide digital platform. Lots more coming uh, related to that. The next slide was, relates to Florida memory. And I always want to um, highlight Florida Memory as an outreach of our uh, state archives and state library. Um, but today, what I want to uh, focus on is Florida Memory Radio and just remind you that we do have streaming uh, music from our collections. Um, and this the schedule, I put the schedule there for you so that you could see uh, the various types of, of music that we do stream on our Florida Memory Radio. This uh, these collections partly come from our Florida Folk Life collection, uh, program and collection, um, and partly from our annual Florida Folk Festival, which is the nation's longest continuously running folk festival. So we're we're thrilled at, in the Department of State and in the division to to uh, to have a role in the uh, the Florida Folk Festival, um, and we're thrilled to be able to bring these collections to you. Um, and we also have several different playlists available from Florida Memory, uh, which highlight um, the the uh, different genres that we have in the collection. So, always want to do a quick plug for Florida Memory. Uh, next slide is about a, a plugging also for our table of content service. Um, you all have, have, have heard me talk about this before, but we're thrilled to be able to offer a table of content service for, uh, for librarians and library staff um, across the state. So you let us know which titles you're interested in, uh, uh, through the link there on the screen, um, filling out a quick little form, and then we send you the table of contents um, when that particular issue comes in, and then you then tell us what um, what articles you're interested in, and we send them to you. So a wonderful service from our Bureau of Library Network Services friends. I'm so happy to provide the table of content service um, and support the work that you all do every day through this uh, in this small way. 
Um, in the next slide, a good reminder related to our professional resources, we do uh, collect um, items for staff members of public libraries, public schools, or public academic libraries. And you can get your state library card online so that you can access a couple of databases and our uh, professional ebooks. Um, so we hope that you are taking advantage of our professional resources. So um, that, that and if, if you're not familiar with them, we'd be more than happy to talk to you about our professional resources as well. And thank you, Cheryl, for your, your kind words. Um, we're, we're happy to, to work in support of the work that you all do every single day. Um, so very happy to do that. So the next slide actually gets, it's just a, some cover art from some of our professional eBooks. And I just was talking about the, your ability to get uh, eBooks, professional eBooks with our, um, with a state library card. So just a sample of some cover art there with the eBooks that we've collected that we believe um, might help you do uh, some portion of your job at, at some point. We all, we obviously also have um, professional books that can be um, borrowed through interlibrary loan as well. So we've got the professional ebooks as well as uh, professional books, and then a couple of professional electronic resources for you as well. So the next part of the um, of the presentation, I want to talk about continuing education. And obviously, you have lots of great places to receive continuing education. Um, always want to plug our Florida Library webinars and the, the MLC training events that are that are held all across the state. Um, we've division webinars and other kinds of training we're going to talk a little bit more about and our web friends at Web Junction and the incredible training that they do and our records management seminars which come from the uh, the Division of Library Information Services and a little bit more on that in just a second. If we move to the next slide, I'll talk about um, some specific training that was held um, and, and can be held uh, in your neck of the woods. Um, we have um, some training that we do uh, to help you in managing archives and historical records. Um, we can come and do a site visit um, and actually look at the collection and help appraise um, how the collection is housed and provide advice. And then we can also um, provide some training uh, on collections management. So please let us know if this would be of interest to you all. Um, I do know that there are a couple of folks who um, are scheduled to be um, online with us right now who have recently participated um, in this type of training. Um, and I think it was a very, uh, very successful and, and helpful, and we would be more than happy to work with you and your staff if this would be um, uh, useful to you um, for, uh, for archives uh, staff to come uh, and provide either a, a, you know, a, a, a collections appraisal um, as well as um, uh, collections uh, management uh, workshop. Thank you, George, uh, for, for, your, for your enthusiastic um, endorsement. Um, we really enjoyed being on site. Although, uh, truthfully, I, I didn't get to, to go. I was here being jealous that um, uh, that my friends in the division were, were were with my friends in Lake County, but I know it went really well. So I'm so excited that we can offer this. Um, and if we go to the next slide, we have um, another exciting announcement coming in that we have um, some additional records management training that will be available quite soon. Stay tuned for a great announcement. Today was my, uh, my you know, sort of teasing up these announcements that are coming soon. Um, you all are aware that we traditionally have done records management seminars, which are full day uh, records management training, six hour uh, records, in-person records management training. We, um, uh, we, can, we also do records management seminars um, and we have some new uh, versions of records management training, online records management training that are coming soon um, that we believe will be um, uh, more flexible and more timely. And so we're looking forward to unveiling some additional records management training opportunities very soon. So stay tuned on that. That's good stuff. The next slide has a list of some things that are upcoming, some, some training opportunities that are coming soon. Um, lots of things going on. Um, we've got a 
small and rural directors meeting uh, call that's happening this week. I'll tell you another thing I realized as I was sitting here a few moments ago that I didn't get on this list. There were two things that I didn't get on this list. So I'm going to uh, spend a little time on those if, if you'll bear with me. Um, also this week on, and I'm sorry, looking it up real fast. Um, I've got a career online high school monthly meetup on Thursday the 14th at 2 p.m. Eastern. So that's Thursday the 14th at 2 p.m. Eastern. This is just a monthly virtual opportunity for libraries that are um, either already participating in the program or who would like to learn more about the program potentially in this sort of way, which is a general conversation. Um, would love for folks to join us um, at that, uh, that opportunity and then as, as is represented here on the screen, the small and rural directors meeting uh, being held uh, at the end of the week. Um, as was uh, mentioned in the chat, um, and I verbalized also that we got the DLIS discussion on Monday afternoon, where we're gonna be talking about that, uh, the Florida Reader uh, program that's, that's getting ready to be announced. So excited about that. Several other things uh, going, going on here. Um, Lots of, of and the, the mention of the town hall. The other thing that didn't make it on my slide here, I don't know, I'm clearly wasn't thinking straight, uh, but is the um, is the opportunity for the Florida Library Association conference that's being held at the end of May. Um, and in association with that Florida Library Association conference, I know we talked about the virtual session about Flynn Share It that will be held as part of the virtual content for the Florida Library Association annual conference. Um, also in conjunction with the Florida Library Association in person part of the conference, uh, the division is hosting a pre-conference on Sunday, May 22nd. That's Sunday, May 22nd in the afternoon. And it's a pre-conference for friends, foundations, and boards. Um, and so we certainly hope that you would join us at that pre-conference if you um, are uh, have a, a, a friends foundation or um, a board that um, we're, we're talking about advocacy and um, membership and how to recruit new members and communication, all of those sorts of things. So I'd love to see you at the FLA pre-conference on May 22nd. Uh, because we're using our federal funds, there is no uh, requirement there's no financial obligation to attend that uh, pre-conference. Obviously, we'd love to have you come and stay and go to the Florida Library Association conference, but um, the, the pre-conference is being held um, on that Sunday afternoon and it is a standalone event. There is an opportunity so at the pre-conference, I've got Peter Pearson and Beth Nowinski from United for Libraries who, who will be there and presenting as our, our content experts. They will both be available for a friend's breakfast um, and another opportunity to meet with them and get information from them as our experts um, on Monday morning. So, so check out FLA for all those particular opportunities. And again, I didn't, didn't get it on my slide. Um, but lots of training opportunities, right? That there, that maybe that's uh, that's really the ticket. Lots and lots of that, and I haven't even uh, gotten uh, scratched the tip of the iceberg with all the training as offered by the multi-type library cooperatives and and other uh, opportunities going on across the state. So, lots of great stuff. Let's look here at our rule revisions. My next slide. We um, we're always in the process of doing rule revisions. Um, we are uh, actively working on uh, revising our GS 15, which is the uh, schedule for public libraries, and we are in the final stage of um, of the uh, we actually have the notice of proposed rule that just came out uh, in last week. Um, on electronic record keeping. So all of those things are going on. Um, these are um, available and you can, as, thank you, Amy T, put the URL in the, um, in the chat. Uh, you can follow the process. So any, uh, any rule that you're interested in, you can uh, set it up and it will let you know whenever there's any rulemaking happening. And let me just, in case you're not familiar with rulemaking, rulemaking is how state agencies um, administer law. Is So the law says what we're allowed to do. The rule is how we, um, how we describe 
what's going to happen. So for instance, whenever we're changing our any of our grant guidelines, that's all happening as part of a rule revision. So I will um, be uh, glad to have you um, to, to participate in the uh, in the rulemaking process by uh, flrules.org. And thank you, uh, Dolly, there for a um, for a, a reminder about another FLA uh, breakout ses session that is happening. That's great news in the chat. Thank you. All right, and so then what I've got next is just some uh, wrap up slides here and watching my time. Uh, don't forget that we have lots of social media presence and we'd love to um, interact with you through social media. And so if you're not aware of, of the ways that we do that, we'd be more than happy to get you more information. Um, and obviously our great newsletters, um, more than happy to share that with you. Um, the next slide gives you an announcement about our next update, which will happen uh, next quarter. And as I said, uh, so looking at this date of July 12th, thank you, Amy T, um, that uh, we will be inside the new uh, state fiscal year at that point. So we will definitely have a signed budget at that point and um, we'll be able to talk a little bit about um, about that uh, with some some uh, definiteness because we'll be in that. And then of course, we'll already be starting. If you sort of think back to that budget cycle, the the, the circle, we'll be starting that process all over again. Uh, we'll be certainly by the July 12th, deep in the throes of developing our budget priorities and, and budget requests for the next legislative session. So I know that's true for you as well. You, it never stops. It's always, uh, always, uh, uh, it, thinking about closing out a year, starting a year, and planning for the future, for the following year. So never, never ends, for sure. So I'm really at a point where um, I'm happy to answer any questions you might have um, uh, related to anything that we, um, that, that, that next slide just takes a minute, Amy T. I don't know, uh, clearly I um, did something in that, I think it's like animated. It takes a minute, I think, for the question mark to show up. I, I, I need to fix that because it's kind of weird because <laughs> it, it feels like a blank slide. Or maybe this time it is a blank slide. Who knows? Um, anyway, I'm happy to answer any of your questions. There we go. Um, if you want to put them in chat or if you want to uh, raise your hand and we'll unmute you. <laughs> there we go. Oh, I like it. Yeah. A white cow eating grass in a snowstorm. Right. <laughs> Right, right, right. <laughs> I haven't seen much of that. I'm a true southerner, so I, I, I but I can envision a cow, a white cow eating grass in a snowstorm. <laughs> any questions you have about any of the content that I covered today or anything that I didn't cover that you'd like more information? Not hearing any questions and having gotten a drink of water. <clears throat> if what, Amy T, if you would go to the next slide for me, please. Thank you. That way, do we just have a perfect? Thank you, thank you. I have my email address and my phone number up there. Um, I, I don't have any other prepared content for today. I do appreciate you joining me um, for this division update. I am happy to stay on um, uh, to uh, answer any questions. Um, or think about uh, snowstorms, those sorts of things. Uh, but uh, I just, I, I would also love to gift you back 12 minutes in your day that you might not have otherwise expected that you would have. So happy to uh, to uh, do that. And yes, thank you, um, Amy T, for the reminder about the uh, the uh, evaluation link. We do need to um, have uh, your feedback. Uh, this is very important to us. Amy T said, we'd love to hear your thoughts about this continuing education opportunity as well as all of our continuing education opportunities. That information is vital um, as we report to the federal government um, in support of how we spend our federal funds. So we definitely need your help um, in filling out that evaluation form. So it's a WUFU form that just was put in chat just a second ago, and I think will be sent to you also as a follow-up. So, 
and I will get a, a link to the COHS meetup. I will be happy to do that. I will take care of that as soon as we're um, sort of, if you will, off the air here. So that's perfect. Don't get that sent out, Cheryl. I'll be happy to do that. Anything else? Not hearing anything else, I think we can um, probably go ahead and um, whatever's the appropriate thing. Uh, my friend Amy T, and we can uh, stop the recording and or um,